John Stone, who had previously referred to his institution as the Railroad House, started building of Stone's public house in the year 1832. Stone previously referred to his establishment as the Railroad House. Not only was John a farmer and a captain in the militia, but he was also a clever businessman who controlled the most of the land in the centre of what was then known as Unionville. John was a farmer and a captain who served in the military. When he realised that the train was going to be built in the heart of the town, on the land that he owned, he took the choice to build a hotel just adjacent to the lines. On September 20th, 1834, the inauguration of the railroad house was attended by a bustling crowd of around 300 individuals who were filled with excitement. A home for his family was finally built on the property, which comprised not just a cow yard and a barn, but also a house for his family to live in. John was the proprietor of the railroad house for a length of time that was shorter than two years, despite the fact that he continued to dwell on the property, and after that he leased it out to a number of different innkeepers. The business was acquired by W. A. Scott in the year 1868, five years after John Scott had gone away in the year 1858. During the course of many years, the building gradually lost its prestige and began to deteriorate inside and out. Leonard Cappy Fournier, who acquired possession of the building in 1976, is the one who is recognized with making a contribution to the restoration of the building to the elegance it had when it was first constructed. It is also thought that Cappy was the first person to examine the supernatural component of the structure. This is another assumption that has been made, published for the first time in a newspaper in the year 1984. At John Stone's Inn, odd occurrences have been taking place ever since Fournier acquired the historic inn seven years ago. Since then, the inn has been experiencing a number of incidents. For instance, there are doors that do not remain fastened and lights that turn themselves on. These are only two instances. As a result of the discoveries that Fournier made public five years ago on the unusual incidents that took place at the inn, a number of psychics and mystics searched the 152-year-old business in an effort to find instances of ghosts. Despite the fact that the descriptions provided by each of the specialists are considerably distinct from one another, Fournier asserts that they all discovered a single item in common. When I brought them to the upstairs function room, they all felt the strangest feelings in the back half of that room, he said to me at the time. Every single individual who was there in that room on the second floor made the exact same statement. As a consequence of anything like that happening to me, I became a believer. In accordance with Fournier's findings, every single one of the psychics said that they had seen more than one ghost, the vast majority of which were gloomy male phantoms. The previous week, psychic Lee Sonnenfeld reported experiencing the same peculiar sensation that he had experienced. It is plausible, as she claims, that an alcoholic by the name of Bert Phillips died away at the inn during the 1890s. There is a possibility that this occurred. At the moment, the spirit of Phillips is determined on staying at the inn since it finds pleasure in the atmosphere that exists there. Regardless of the identity of the ghost, Butch Adams, the assistant manager, has said that he will not be discovered dead at the inn by himself during the night. No matter who the ghost is. One night, as Adams was finishing up floors in the building, he said that he became afraid, and he was pretty terrified. He was a really fearful person. It was for no apparent reason that a handful of bird seed fell through holes in the ceiling and clanged down to the floor where he was working. He was working at the time. In accordance with Fournier's findings, bartenders are consistently reporting that water faucets turn themselves on. Additionally, customers have reported that they have been tapped on the shoulder only to turn around and find that there is no one behind them.
The following is an excerpt from an article that was also published in 1984 and states that Ralph Bibbo, a professional hypnotist and the founder of ECHO, Education Concerning a Higher Order, was a visitor at the inn. Bibbo claims that he has finally been able to uncover the horrible tale that has kept between six and seven spirits walking the inn for nearly 140 years. Bibbo says that he has been able to unearth this narrative. Bibbo had been a member of a great number of sessions prior to the discovery of this information. And after having interactions with a number of the spirits, including a chambermaid by the name of Sadie, Bibbo said that he was told that John Stone had accidentally killed a New York boarder named Michael. Additionally, Bibbo stated that he had been notified of this information. Stone had accused the visitor of cheating in a poker game that took place upstairs and resulted in a profit for Stone of $3,000. There were accounts that indicated the year to be 1845. According to Bibbo, six or seven of the persons who saw the murder and aided Stone in concealing the body in the basement were related to each other in a way that was concealed from the owner, even in the domain of the spirit world. This is what Bibbo said to be the situation. In the course of one of the sessions that was caught on tape, Stone reluctantly entered the body of Terry Pendleton, who was a member of the ECO. Stone then turned his attention to the crowd that was present throughout the session and shouted at them, asking them to, Get out of here. You are required to leave my property now. As a result of the fact that Fournier believes Bibbo's case to be so convincing, he has made the decision to give Bibbo permission to dig up the basement in order to uncover the body that has vanished. Bibbo said that it is a given that we would find a skeleton after our investigation. It may take a couple more sessions to figure all this out, but we'll find it.